Hey guys, this is Curtis from AFC Curtis. I'm super excited to have, it's a history making episode too, because it's the first time ever I get to interview a manager or a coach of the Canadian Premier League. And I'm here with Pacific FC's coach, James Merriman. How are you doing there, James? I'm good, Curtis. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to have you. I mean, like I said, it's history. I've never have, I've had players on, I've had supporters on, but this is the next step. I get, I get a coach like yourself on for Pacific FC and just for the CPL in general. So that's, I'm pretty excited for it. Awesome. This video, more importantly, this video is more to kind of just recap uh, Pacific FC's 2019 season, kind of look ahead to the 2020 season. Uh, my first question for you is, as a whole, what's your thoughts on the 2019 Pacific FC season? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a big question. Um, it was a huge undertaking for, for the club, um, for the ownership, for everyone, for the staff. Um, uh, a lot of beginnings, right? There's a lot of firsts. So... In terms of that, it was a lot of work and a lot of energy um, and, and, you know, people, people worked extremely hard to, to make it happen. And I think in that, it was a massive success um, and that we have it off the ground. And now we have a program, we have a team, um, the fans were excellent, the stadium, uh, I don't know how much, you know, if you saw the building slowly uh, was getting finished with the season. So it really wasn't even done until August. Um, which was kind of a metaphor for where we were at as a as a club and as a as a league. So, um, you know, a lot of firsts, a lot of hard work. Um, we're off the ground. We're we're up and ready to go. So, you know, in terms of a success, I think it is a massive success to get it to get it started. Yeah. No. I I felt I felt like your like just specifically your club uh, Pacific FC in general. We're kind of we're one of the younger clubs, right? Uh, they they led the league, I believe it was in under 21 minutes uh, yeah. this year. They they had a lot of young players for for a good example. And yeah. I really didn't know for me like exactly like how you would gauge the success of the season. Like would it be like obviously ultimately you want to win the Seabold Trophy, but the little successes sometimes you know in order to win a big trophy like that you kind of have to take it in steps. Kind of you have to climb the stairway of success, right? Yes. Um, and I felt like the first the first step for you guys was just to get the young players out there, get them playing, get them minutes, get them developed. Do you feel like that's kind of the the way the season went for you? Like that, you finally were able to say, "Yeah, we got that first step out of the way." I do. Yeah, that was the identity that that we wanted to create. That's our philosophy, our vision for the club is, you know, young and dynamic uh, Canadian players and and helping them go towards their potential. That's that's what we're trying to do is provide a platform for them. And and in terms of that, I think uh, it was successful for sure. And as you saw. As the season went on, some players grew, um, other players maybe struggled, which is which is normal, completely normal for young players. Um, but we're going to continue to play them. We we want to continue with that path that we've chosen, and that is who we are as a club. That's that's our identity. Was there any moments this season that stood out to you as maybe your favorite moments, whether it's for PFC in general or even the CPL? A lot. The first goal. Um, the fans, the the stadium was. I'm from I'm from the island, so you know, to have a professional club, to have the stadium that is beautiful, um, and then the the crowd that came out to support the the first game and the, all the build up, the momentum, and then the first goal, the reaction, the noise, um, just that moment was was massive, and obviously. Um, you know, there was many, many moments throughout the season, but but that was a big one for sure. Was there any players that stood out to you in the 2019 season? Obviously, there's a lot of, you know, fresh faces, let's say, to, to the pro game. There's a lot of new new faces there, uh, maybe coming from academies or even, you know, Vancouver Royal Caps, FC2. To the club, is there, like, any standouts to you uh, from just specific FC this season that, that really you're kind oh, of for, taken away with? From our own? From your own club, yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought um, once that uh, Taryn Campbell scored his first goal, I believe it was against Halifax away, um, he scored his first goal. It was a weight off his shoulders because he had, he had been scoring um, the entire preseason. I think he had two games where he scored uh, a hat trick in, in both games. So he, he was flying in preseason. Um, obviously, Marcus Haber was the, the starting striker and, and Tara was working to find his way in the team. And he scored that first goal. And then all of a sudden, he came to life. And I think everybody saw uh, the potential he has as a, as a goal-scoring uh, striker. Um, Alessandro Hodgepoor, our central midfielder, 19 years old, 
um, slowly kind of developed and progressed into the season. At the beginning, he was quiet, quieter, I think. Um, and then as the season grew on, he became a bit of a leader with, with the young players. Uh, his performances reflected that, uh, I think. And uh, he became a very, you know, very competent, very good central midfielder across the league. Um, so I was happy with him. Um, Caden Chung, I think he grew into the season. He ended in a, in, a, in a great place. I'm excited to see what he can do next year. Um, but those are, those are young uh, players that took their opportunity and ended in a really positive way. So you mentioned there, Taryn Campbell. Did you, did you guys know last winter when you were signing these players that you know, he was going to have this crazy season and be possibly your guys' best player this year? No, I think, I think I've, I see the potential Taryn has. I always have. Uh, he was played mostly as a winger the last few years, and he didn't get a ton of time down in Fresno. Uh, he, he was having a hard time breaking into that starting lineup and showing himself. And he was hungry to prove himself again and probably most of all to himself. Um, we moved him as a striker, moved him centrally, where I, I prefer him. I think that's his best position. And the biggest quality that he shows is what he can do in front of goal. Um, he's a good he's a good finisher he's a, he's a good striker so uh, I think I think we were surprised with how much uh, success he had and and but I still think he could have even done more once the season got going once he started going in form and I expect a big year next year so the, do you do you find it and now I, I'm gonna admit he was I didn't put Taryn Campbell on my team of the year only because there's so yeah. many good there's so many other really good players out there but do you do you feel like Taryn Campbell sometimes uh gets slept on in terms of you know the I guess you could call it the media of, of CPL kind of and a lot of them actually I, I recognized uh didn't really have him in the team of the year which you know kind of was unfair because he, he was right up there in goals I think the entire season he was consistent mm -hmm. uh he mm -hmm. would score you know two three goals a game almost every couple of games or at least once a month kind of thing do you feel like Taryn Campbell is like an underrated or underappreciated superstar if you will in the CPL? I think he is, but I, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing for Taryn. Um, he needs to continue to work. He knows he wants more. Uh, we want more for him. So he's still working towards his potential. He's very young. He's 21 years old. Um, I shouldn't say very young, but 21 years old. And this is his first full uh, real you know, experience in, in professional consistently playing and being a player that's relied upon. So he's got lots of room to grow, uh, maybe a little bit under the radar. I don't think that's a bad thing. People are maybe waiting to see what he does in his second season. And then, uh, you know, might be different, different conversation. But uh, I think uh, I give him a lot of credit. He also is a very strong uh, kid and he takes a lot of abuse up there. So maybe he doesn't get enough credit for that physically. But um no, he's he's in a good place. So it's safe to say that that Taron Campbell is probably locked down for P for the play on PFC next year, twenty twenty. Yes. Yeah, yes. Taron right. will be back. And he'll be back. And and how about you know you mentioned Marcus Haber too. Do you feel like Marcus Haber had a bit of a uh, of a rough patch type of, of year? Just because I felt you know before the season started, uh, for you know from my point of view and from I think a lot of people media's people's point of views a lot of people had Marcus Haber right up there in the golden boot race the entire year mm. but it just felt like you know obviously had the injury problems uh throughout the patches of the season you know there's quite a few games especially in the spring season I found it where he would looked really good but he just kept on hitting a post or just falling short here and there do you feel that Marcus Haber could still get unlocked next year and still have a rebound year next year or do you do you find it that he's going to be a good supporting kind of striker and hopefully veteran uh, leader for for Taron Campbell. Well, he is he is a good um, veteran leader for for Taron Campbell, and he was um, you know struck with injuries and and physically definitely had a tough year. That's that's you know he knows that we know that um, maybe even a little bit unlucky with some of the the chances at the very beginning of the year, and he wasn't able to really catch form and take off, but. Uh, you know, as a as a striker, he wasn't able to to catch form, but then he also got uh, fell into injuries physically. So he's he's probably not happy with his season. He, you know, I know that, and he's going to want to do a lot more next year. And most importantly, he has to get himself right uh, physically and feel good. Um, and then, uh, yeah, he he could be he could be massive for us on the field and have have a great year, which is what everybody you know kind of expected this year 
Um, but like I said, physically, he needs to take care of himself, get himself right, and then uh, we'll see what he can do next year. What's for next season now, look, kind of looking ahead to next season, what are some areas do you think that Pacific FC could improve on, whether it's maybe in the game or maybe formation-wise or even positional-wise, uh, something you might want to target this coming winter in the offseason? Oh, I think, I mean, our, our central defenders, um, we, we struggled with injury as well and maybe didn't have enough depth there, um, maybe across, across the back four, to, to be honest. Um, you know, defensively, we, we conceded goals. Uh, we conceded too many goals. That's, that's clear. Uh, I thought we, did, we played a, a decent brand going forward and on the ball. Um, you know, at times we were exciting in the attack. But consistently over the season, we, we didn't uh, do a good enough job keeping the ball out of the net and, and controlling the game without the ball. So that'll be an area that we need to improve and, and focus on. Um, and also, you know, that's, that's how we are as a team, who we are as a team and how we want to play. Also personnel and who we, who we need to bring in and, you know, what, what positions we need to support. So in terms of off-season signings, you would say probably if you had to rank them, it's probably, you know, central defender is probably number one on your, on your wish list this year. Yeah, I think that's been also, you saw the players that are, that are, that are going out mm -hmm. um, of the group. So, you know, that's pretty clear. Those are, those are positions that we want to, um, you know, strengthen and, and, and have really solid and strong and players that we're really confident with going forward. Um, and yeah, and then a few others as well. So when when do we when could we maybe expect some some signings, whether returning players or new signings? Yeah, I think in the next few weeks, the next couple of weeks, um, players will start to start to roll out, and and you'll start to see um, the team taking taking shape. Yeah, yeah, just because it's it's been a really quiet. I mean, not too quiet. I mean, I, I I'm in Winnipeg, right? So for Valor FC, they literally just announced something. I think it was on Thursday or Friday. Before yeah. that, I was like, are they even around anymore? You know, <laughs> you didn't even know because they were so quiet. But That's I mean, and then, yeah, Pacific FC was another club I was kind of wondering too because they announced those players, some of those players were, uh, you know, were leaving the club. And obviously there was um, Norman Jr. and Smith, both their loan deals yes. are now over. Yeah. Um, now let, let's quickly talk about to Marcel Dijon. How, how big of an impact was that? when he got injured for Marcel, like how, how impactful do you think was that? Do you think if you had him for the full season of health, do you feel like you could have contended a little bit better for, for possibly a top three spot? Uh, for, for sure. I mean, Marcel de Jong is, is in my opinion, you know, one of the best players, if, if not the top player and across the league and uh, in, in what he is and what he can do today. And also in, obviously in his experience as a player, he's an excellent player. He's, He's excellent character and person in the locker room. His professionalism, day to day, how he goes about his business is so important for for the young players. And you know, most of all, he was frustrated with with the, with the injury, the timing of the injury, and then not being able to play a bigger role in the season. You started to see, you know, just in the little snapshots, the the times that he did did camp come onto the field, kind of his presence and and what he brings to the group. So. We can't say what we would have done with him because we, we don't know, to be honest, but would he have been a, a massive help and is he a huge factor in our team? For sure. He, and he was also our captain, right? Mm. Um, and that was decided in preseason before he picked up the injury. So that was a huge piece that we missed. And uh, he's, again, been excellent in his recovery and we look forward to having him next year. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's a top, top player for sure in this league. If if you could go out this winter and sign any single player in the CPL that played there in 2019, if you had to look, maybe one or two players, uh, who who would they be? Ah, I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough one to. Uh, I don't know. I'll stick with our group. You'll stick with the group. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, I, I think overall, I, I thought uh, Pacific FC is honestly one of the, my favorite teams to watch all season. I just love. I just love like youthful kind of energetic yeah. squads. And I felt like that was specific FC really in, in a nutshell. And, and, you know, I, I will, I will admit they're one of my top three favorite teams. If I had to rank them, they're in my top three. They're That's in my top cool. three. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> but no, it was, it was a really good season for them. I thought a lot of players developed. What are you looking forward to in 2020 for Pacific FC? Well, I, we would like to be, you know, close that gap. 
um, to, to the top two. I think everybody will want to do that and, and be much more competitive. We also want to be much more consistent. I thought we had some very, very bright performances and some, you know, really poor performances. So we need to, we need to figure that out um, and become more consistent. Um, and I'm also really looking forward to our young group and see how they grow and, and mostly their approach to, the, to year two in the league and, and what they're, what they can do because they do have, you know, big potential and, you know, they are, they can be exciting when they're, when they're on and enjoying and playing free. So um, if we add the right pieces, it would be, uh, yeah, hopefully the players and, and us will, will enjoy even more. Right. But mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of work to do to get to where we want to be for sure. Well, James, uh, you know, thanks for letting me, or let me interview here today, and I'll let you go, go back to the work there and uh, announcing some more signings, hopefully for us there. And, yeah, we'll, uh, get, we'll get on that. Thanks for being the first coach uh, to, to be on AFC Curtis. Hey, we, we, on behalf of the coaches and the league, we really appreciate uh, what you're doing and the work that you put in. So anytime, um, anytime, you know, give me a shout. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, and good luck uh, this offseason. Good luck in 2020, and, uh, you know, I hope to see uh, Pacific FC contending for the title in 2020. Thank you. All right, Curtis. Have a good one.